they have two pointing models for each port, for each NAS miss, and you can switch from one to another one very fast. You can consider, on, but we will test. Huh? It will be, it, it belongs to the test that we will do, that we will do at OHP, uh, starting next week. Uh, we can consider that we can switch from one let's speak to another one in less than one minute. And probably we'll have to model uh, M2, but it's quite easy. It's quite easy. It's not very difficult. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions for the discussion? Don't be shy, please raise your hand if you have any questions. One of the questions that uh, somebody asked me before was if the data will be for who from Colibri? For all of the participants of this conference, for or who? Oh, hi. Comment on that? Oh, what is, I don't know, we are 45% of the time allocated to the consortium. A part of this time would be used by Swob for the follow-up. For the observation performed during, for the Swob, for the Swob alert, all the data, the agreement that we have is that all the data will be delivered to the Swob mission. So it would be allocated to uh, everyone on the bomb uh, could access to this uh, data, for sure. It's, uh, it's very clear at this level. After, we have a part allocated to the consortium, to the member of the project. We have not yet discussed, we have discussed from well, around the table sometimes uh, between us, how we will allocate this time, but it's not yet fixed uh, at the level of the consortium. Fact of the members of the team. So we have 10% allocated to the observatory, to, uh, which is the price to pay to be hosted. And this time it's managed by, by you in Mexico. It's not, uh, it's independent from us. And we have 45% of the time, the rest is allocated uh, between the French, to the French and Mexican community. Uh, and we split into. Uh, I give you all the details. In this case, it's about, for Mexico, I don't know. I imagine that will be uh, an open, uh, you will open, uh, it will be a call for proposal every semester, something like that. But in France, it will be the case. Every semester, we will have a call for uh, proposal huh? and it will be, be managed locally in France. I see Mexico, maybe Alan or William, you can comment how you will manage your time. I, I would imagine that there's a Mexican community time Okay, the roughly 30% of the, of the telescope time that's available to the Mexican community will be offered like all of our other telescopes um, in, in San Pedro through the time allocation committee, the CAT. Um, I would imagine that the data will be preparatory for a year, um, the, the, the community data. I think it'll be a lot like right to you. Um, I've not seen any suggestion or any pressure to change the model that we have of, of allocating community time. Uh, I can make a comment on, uh, uh, in France, uh, just to, to be very clear, we have a call for proposal for the TBL, which is a two meter on peak humidity and the two meter at HP on the idea that we use the same format. It would be in, in the, well, we will proceed with these two telescopes. Another question, which is important, what is the status of the data of, of Swab? Alors maybe Bertrand, uh, you can comment because it's a tricky question. Uh, unfortunately, but Bertrand has just left. <laughs> he's, he's too clever, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he left uh, two minutes ago. <laughs> it, it's a killing question. Uh, Arnaud or François? Uh, François you know, and Arnaud are here, yes. Or we can wait for Bertrand tomorrow, if maybe uh, it's up to you. 
Uh, Bertrand will, will not attend tomorrow. He could attend on uh, Thursday. Okay. Because okay. he has a medical appointment tomorrow. So. Okay. Uh, so, François, if you want to comment what is the status of this one data, because it's complicated. Huh? Yes. Yes, it is so complicated that, that I will not be very precise in my answer. <laughs> uh, uh, because, of course, uh, talking about spawn, uh, we are talking of a, a, cl a closed area, uh, meaning for some, uh, uh, for some data. Um, but what I know, uh, what is open to everybody are the alerts. I think uh, Arno explained that. So uh, anybody around the earth can use these alerts and make its own observations and uh, do uh, what they want with that. Um, talking about the, the measurements of uh, the space instruments, of course, this is, I would say, for a certain period, maybe one year, I'm not sure about that, but around one year, the data are um, just shared between uh, the Chinese and the French involved in the Swan mission before then going to uh, the international community. Uh, there is a there is a kind of open door for scientists not uh, in, in involved in, in this uh, community of Swan. I mean, not uh, not Chinese or not French. Uh, because as you as you know probably uh, the, this one mission of course is uh, primarily uh, dedicated to observation of the gamma rivers but um, we also in between two gamma rivers make observations uh, so uh, there will be a kind of uh, a selection of uh, uh, targets to be observed during uh, this sub mission I would say in between two gamma rivers, and uh, then uh, there is a kind of uh, um, open door to to other scientists uh, who who could then enter the swarm, and then entering this way, they can have the data. Maybe uh, yes, Arno, I leave you the floor for explaining this this uh, slide. In fact, I don't have the answer for, for ground data, but I just uh, took the opportunity to display the, the data policy for the core program, I mean, gamma ray burst. Uh, so the situation is clear for uh, space data. Uh, general program, uh, for those who are not familiar with them, I just remind that it's a, a target observation in between two alerts. But uh, as soon as the bird is detected, then uh, it becomes uh, prioritaire. Uh, and then you, there is also target of opportunity program. So this is the situation for uh, these programs, but I confess that uh, I don't know the answer for, for the ground telescope data. So maybe I, I, I would propose to to have a discussion on this uh, as soon as, as Bertrand is back, maybe on Thursday, uh, to, to add it. Uh, mm -hmm. we, can, we can keep the discussion Friday at the end. Yeah. Yeah, 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 fine, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments for the discussion on any of the topics that we have touched today? Uh, William, yes, I have a question about uh, the impact of the pandemic. Do, do we foresee now that this impact will uh, force us to change our strategy for test and integration of the instruments? Or do we stick with the current philosophy uh, with just delays? So we, we say we, we stay with the plan philosophy with Dragito, Drago, Kashir, and so on, and this is integrated at that time in this sequence. So we have a sequence, and we have places where uh, we do the integration and the test. So do we foresee that this can be changed or not? Well, we briefly commented on this earlier this morning in terms of the integration of Dragito and the test at OHP. Um, and there, the plan today, I believe, is to ship the instrument and 
do the testing uh, without having the team from Mexico necessarily travel. It will obviously be complicated, but uh, I would let Alan and Stefan comment on that more specifically. Oh, it's exact. Huh? This is really the plan. Uh, Jean-Luc, we need really to do the test, a full test, a representative test of the telescope plus uh, Draghito, mm -hmm. a sample of Drago if you want. Yeah. Uh, because at the end, we have to pay the telescope and we have to be sure that the telescope fulfill our requirements. Uh, because when the telescope will leave uh, France, we go to Mexico, you know what happens with the company. It will be a nightmare if we have to, we discover something. And for sure, we will discover some, something that we have to minimize this discovery phase, I would say. Uh, so we really need to make this test a full representative test because we need to test the telescope uh, with Targeto, with the software also. Huh? We have to be sure that we speak properly to the telescope and the telescope. So what what I understand, Stefan, from what you say, is that uh, the pandemic doesn't change the plans, just there are just delays and we try to adapt, but the whole sequence is the same. Yes, but it puts oh, yes. uh, technically for the management of the team, it puts much more pressure on the team uh, in OHP and LAM because yeah. we have to do, uh, uh, we'll have maybe Salvador, uh, Jorge, I don't know, Alan, we, we joined, but it will be complicated, I suspect, in any case, if any, uh, if it is possible, huh? we have no guarantee, but it will be complicated and it will be a one shot that we come once, we install. Uh, if we have to address something after one month, uh, it would not be possible to come back, I imagine. So uh, means we have a lot of pressure locally, and it was not scheduled at the beginning. Oh. And at the opposite, the development of Draghetto is more complicated because, uh, uh, you know, uh, when you develop an instrument and you install the instrument, you don't have to write everything because you have something in head. You know the instrument already. Here yeah, they have to deliver fine, to. We have to learn everything. We've, we've, we've gone from a very much, the documentation is a, a significant change because originally Dragito was gonna be installed on, once on the telescope for six weeks. And so, you know, we were not gonna provide the documentation that you'd provide for a, a long-term instrument. We were just gonna turn up and the documentation was gonna be mainly here. Mm -hmm. Obviously there would be procedures written that we could agree on, but it wouldn't be the documentation deliver for a common user instrument. We've gone from that to now having to document it to a level that a different team of engineers can install it. And that's, it's a lot of work. Yeah. At the opposite, we have to be positive. It's very nice because it forces the team to write a long documentation, a detailed documentation. So How is that very nice? No, you never do. <laughs> How is that? Yeah, okay. Um, I, I think there is, so I, I think in terms of Draghito, okay, there are modifications and there are, are delays, but our strategy is the same. Okay, we'll install Draghito, we'll test the telescope in France. We'll remove Draghito, it'll come back here, the telescope will be shifted and installed. The, way, the place I see more uncertainty is what happens at the telescope. Um, what, what is the impact on the schedule for the delivery of Drago? What is the impact on the, on the delivery of Kajir? Mm -hmm. And uh, at the moment, I don't think we, uh, you know, we can be sure about that. And I think it's a situation that we need to monitor. Um, in the worst case, we have Draguito, okay? And Draguito is a, a fully capable optical imager. Yeah. It's not what we want but it's, it's a good backstop in case of delays. Yeah. For all you theoretical and numerical types, and, um, this is like documenting a code so that somebody who's never seen it can use it. <laughs> it's at least as bad, I think. And debug it. <laughs> and debug it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions? When can we have a physical face-to-face -face meeting? Oh my God. <laughs> well, we can do it. I just don't know what the consequences will be. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think that's, 
Uh, I think everybody would like that. Uh, I yes. hope we can do we it. We discuss this uh, Friday, I think, in the end. Yeah, yeah. Because well, we'll definitely have to do it for first light on the observatory. <laughs> um, I have one, William. Yes, Diego, please. So, how many GRBs does will Swarm see? And from those, how many will Colibri see? And from those, how many do we think will be short? Approximately. Yes, that's Fabio. <laughs> ah. Sí, tenía la misma duda. Well, lo estábamos, we lo estábamos platicando entre nosotros. Okay, yeah, I had the same it. doubt. Yeah. No one was brave enough to ask the question, so I was the only one. <laughs> well, I guess we had this in a graph last year in Toulouse. Stefan, would you like to comment on that? Or anybody who remembers the number off the top of their heads? I, yes, I can do it. Please. This one about uh, short bursts, then the best instrument. It depends if you want short burst with or without the localization. If you, if you want short burst with the localization, then this is a clear and uh, this is a few per year. I don't know if this is uh, maybe five, ten per year. I cannot uh, warranty that. If you want short burst in general, then to, to check coincidence, for instance, with gravitational waves. Uh, then the GRM, they, they serve a, a much broader part of the sky and they are more sensitive at high energy, so they are the correct instrument. And in that case, they will detect, will have uh, 90 to 100 per year, 20% of that. So you can expect 20, 25 uh, short GRBs without localization per year from Zoom. And uh, with the localization, maybe five, ten, something like that. I can add another, another element, which is the efficiency of, of Colibri, or which is a, a genetic quantum telescope. The probability that you detect, uh, that you are able to observe in real time, it means after one minute, uh, the delay between the alert on board and the reception on the ground, on the start of the observation. So the efficiency of uh, Colibri it has been computed over time is between 20, it's, it's around 20%. It means that 20% of the gamma bus will be detected Im almost immediately. And we include bad weather conditions, uh, any bug, there is no bug uh, by definition in the software, but you can have a bug, you can do sometimes due to technical issue. Uh, if you increase this delay to uh, 12 hours, because mainly you are dominated by the day-night effect, huh? Uh, if you have an error at the end of the day. Uh, if you, you increase the delay to 12 hours, you increase this number to about 50%. Thank you. You have some elements. Okay, thank you. I was looking at um, the presentation that um, was given last year in Toulouse by Bertrand, precisely. Well, charged by Bertrand uh, for these numbers. We can we can discuss it over the week. I have it here. I'll find it. But I think it's around forty to sixty GRB per year detected okay. by Eclair and twenty percent detected by uh, Colibri at real time. That's that's a number. Mm -hmm. yes. If we have no localization at one point, we will do almost no localization means very, very large error. It's not only five degrees. Um, this question is raised often. So I know there is a slide we have here at NES uh, discussed with uh, Bertrand. So I, I think we, we can try to, to propose and uh, to, to show this slide. Uh, answering this question on Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, Alan, you have a comment on instrument costs? Yeah, um, this is this is getting back to what Jean-Luc's question. Um, and I think I think I have a, a comment on this about why Kajir and Dragle are so expensive compared to the spectrograph. And it's to do with field. I was thinking back to Swift to, and Rattier. Rat, Rattier was designed for Swift and Swift gives us a position to within three arc minutes very quickly and 
you know, a couple of arc seconds very quickly as well. And so we designed for our tier to basically image like a one arc minute field of view. Um, it, it does a bit bigger, but that's the combined field of view. And the optical part of RAT here, which is two channels, so this is directly comparable with Draggle, costs less than 150,000 euros. It was two $50,000 CCDs and much less than $50,000 in mechanics and optics. In, in Draggle, we have to image a field of view, which is almost you know, a factor of 10 linearly, almost a factor of 100. Um, in area, and that's driving our costs. You know, there we're, we're ending up buying two two hundred thousand dollars CCDs and spending more than a hundred thousand dollars on optics, and you know, there's a chunk of so we're we're over well over one hundred and fifty, uh, well over half a million euros just in hardware costs. Now, yeah. once, once you've got, the, the, let me just finish, then I'll, I'll pass it. So once you know where it is. Once you know where your GRB is, the instrument is cheap because it doesn't need a big field of view. So that's, yes, I think, why the spectrum is so cheap. I really appreciate this, uh, this response because uh, it, was a, it was a big question. So we now know uh, what each focus is for. One is when you don't know exactly where the GRB is or something like that, you have to, to find the afterglow. And this is why you have on one side, this imaging uh, of a wide field of view, and then when you know where it is to arc second uh, for, uh, precision, then you can use the other one, which is much cheaper. Okay, and and that okay, this is uh, this is consistent. I, I was there was something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, question? We are in time, man. No? Okay. We have a question. So we go to bed and you go to lunch. I'm sorry? We go to bed and you go to lunch. <laughs> yes, I guess. No, we can... I have a question, William. Yes, Alejandro, please. Uh, well, I recognize that the Polyri collaboration is quite promising by itself, but uh, beyond this project, I would like to ask uh, about the interest to combine the scientific goals of this project with the goals planned with the Messier telescope, uh, which is, uh, as far as I know, it's uh, a planet telescope. And so, does anyone know about the, if there are some advances of talks about this possible collaboration? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I follow which collaboration. There is a suggestion, probably by David Vance, uh, suggesting to combine the potentials of the ah. telescope with the. Uh, Messier telescope in the future. No. And I'd like to know there are some advances for these goals. Hello. Uh, maybe I can comment on this. Ah. Uh, uh, it's a proposal from David Valscabo. Mm -hmm. um, it's a satellite. It's a proposal for a wide field, uh, very wide field telescope in low orbit. It's, uh, presently, it's just a proposal. I've, I've seen nothing. I, I know that he got some money to make some studies, but I'm, it, it is not in the plan of CNES, uh, to my knowledge. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, of his also, maybe Francois have more news. <laughs> but uh, I know that it's, it's a proposal. I have no idea of the future of Messier, to, to be honest. Okay. But to be, uh, we have to be clear. Alors, David is not available today due to personal drama. Uh, he cannot join, unfortunately. Uh, yes, maybe we can ask. He, he has say some slides also. Huh? Uh, uh, last year, yes, he, he made the presentation last year. In any case, the time scale of such a proposal of Messier uh, for a space project it, it is at least ten years, I would say. Huh? <laughs> I've never seen 
a space project like this done in less than 10 years. Hein? Uh, François. Oh, yes, I confirm. <laughs> okay. So it's a very long time scale. Okay. So we can ask David when he comes. We can, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Alejandro. All right, so maybe it's time to follow Jean-Luc's suggestion, unless anybody has any other questions. Uh, and you go to dinner and bed and we go to lunch. Well, so yeah. I'd like to thank you all again for, for coming today. And uh, we start again tomorrow, same time, 8.30 Central Time in Mexico, and um, which is 3.30 in France. Yes? Yeah. It's perfect. Okay. So, so, we can, um, we'll can to pick it up. so we'll see you all tomorrow. It's the same link. Yes, Rosa? Yes, it's the same. Same link. Please, please right. send me your presentation in PDF, please, the, yes. the speaker please. of tomorrow. Please send, uh, yes, please send Rosa materials. Okay? Thank you all. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Have a nice dream. Bye. Bonsoir. Bye. 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 Bye.